So we have some true or false signals here. So let's look at them one by one. Sampled signals must be digital. So if something is sampled, that means it's discrete. It doesn't necessarily mean that these values are quantized. So they can still be continuous in amplitude, even though they're discrete in time. So the first statement is false. Sampled signals don't have to be digital. They can very much be analog. Second statement, periodic signals cannot be recovered after sampling. Now remember, a periodic signal will have a discrete spectrum. So the spectrum of a periodic signal will be discrete. Now a discrete spectrum, by definition, its highest frequency content will also be a discrete component. So F max will be a discrete frequency component. So if you critically sample, and that's what Nyquist sampling means. Nyquist sampling means critical sampling. So we're talking about critical sampling. That means the sample rate is equal to exactly 2F max. So if we do that, then we cannot recover that content. So that component will be lost forever. It's not possible to have a low pass filter that can separate the message from the first replica. So periodic signals cannot be recovered if you're going to critically sample. So that second statement is true. C, a band limited signal can be recovered exactly from its samples when the sampling rate is greater than the Nyquist rate. So band limited means we have a, a limited frequency. So we have some value of frequency F max. So that's a band limited signal. And if you were to sample that or oversample that, then it would be possible to recover the original message. So they can be recovered. When it says the sampling rate is greater than, that means we're oversampling. So Fs is greater than 2F max. So that's true. D, to allow for perfect reconstruction, the maximum time between adjacent samples is t over t, t over 2, where t is the reciprocal of the highest frequency. So they're saying, look, t is 1 over f max. And the maximum time between samples, so samples can't be further apart than half t. And that's absolutely correct. So we can write that out if you like. You can say, well, if fs has to be greater than twice f max, that means that ts has to be less than 1 over 2f max, which is like saying t over 2. So that's true. E, over and under sampling both lead to aliasing and spectral folding. Well, aliasing is spectral folding, and that only comes from undersampling, not oversampling. So that's false. And F, anti-aliasing filters can completely remove the effects of aliasing, allowing undersampled signals to be reconstructed perfectly. Now, anti-aliasing cannot reverse the effect of aliasing. It can't remove the effects of aliasing. It, if, if we um, apply the filter before sampling, then we can avoid aliasing happening. And if we apply it after undersampling, then we can remove the portion of the spectrum that's been affected. But we haven't removed the effect of aliasing. We've simply removed the portion of the spectrum that's been affected. So anti-aliasing can never completely remove the effects. It can somehow avoid or mitigate these effects. So we'd say F 
is false. And there you have your final answer.